Welcome to the Brisbane Small Business Show, Alan. Um, everybody else is here all of a sudden. We've been having a great chat in the background and uh, and, and finding out a lot. I've, I've already learned a lot from Alan this morning uh, on the whole job keeper scenario. Um, but Alan, what I want to do is 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 get across to the guys in Brisbane Small Business um, how broad and and really it's simple in. Uh, how it's offered, but it's actually quite detailed in what needs to happen from what I'm understanding. Is that true? It is. And you've got to be so careful. We were talking a little bit earlier about the date the employee becomes an employee. So let's say they, they come on board on the 2nd of March. You don't get it. Let, let's say your turnover um, has gone down in April and then goes up in, in May. Do you get it? Is it 30% related to April only or is it across the... the June quarter. And remember, you're lodging a bass that shows your turnover. So you can't really fudge that. So, and there is discretion. The tax office have allowed and have said they will allow discretion. The other part of it is it's 750 a week or 1500 a fortnight. How do the weeks fall? So let's say, for instance, you're, you're paying weekly and, you've, and the, the forms are not out yet. Tax office will be releasing all the forms probably this week, we think. Uh, for registration. Um, everyone has, would have already registered their interest, but they were actually really So, uh, you know, you, you, you could be out of pocket and maybe you only get one fortnightly amount in the month of April and then in March, uh, sorry, in, in May, the, the others will fall depending on how you pay. So but if, we can, if we can just go back for the real basics. So the job keeper is there for people who are earning already 1500 a fortnight is that correct or, or they have to be paid 1500 a fortnight uh, so if, if if they weren't paid 1500 a fortnight beforehand is that job is that person not eligible for job keeper no they're not you've, you've got okay. to be so that's a really important that's a really important fact um and and that was missed in the detail okay um the, the, well, it was it was lost in, in the greater scheme of things. So let, let me get that clear. Sorry, Kevin. If they've got to be employed by you on the 1st of March, yep. um, if they're only on, say, 1,000 a fortnight, you can up, you've got to up their wage to 1,500. Yep. So, so it's, they don't have to have 1,500 on the 1st of March, but they have to be employed by you. So you'd have to have had a signed employment declaration and maybe in, in the last week of eight of um, February's STP run, you would need yep. to have the, that person as employee. And remember yep. on STP, you're, you're lodging the tax file number of your employees. So you, there's a lot of um, backup that allows the tax office to check things. So each employee yep. is unique. An employee cannot have a job keeper allowance from two employers, can only off one. Yep. So if, if you've got person is working and you might have in your company have people across two or three companies or somebody's working for you part-time or um, somebody else, two, two or three employers, it's got to nominate which employer is, is going to get the job keeper allowance. Yep. For, so, so, that has to be done. So, so behind the scenes, you've got to be paying 1500 a fortnight. You, if you were paying him a thousand a fortnight, so 500 a week, um, and now you're going to up it, you don't have to pay SGC on that extra amount. So you'd have to pay your 9.5% super. So within your payroll system, you're going to have to carve out, for instance, in zero, you're going to have to put in an extra pay classification that doesn't yep. add the super automatically at 9.5% uh, because you don't have to pay. You can, and the tax office has said you can pay. I don't know you would, but... Um, you know, but you don't have to pay the nine and a half percent on that extra amount that you're paying him that gets you the job keeper allowance. And the other really important uh, part that, that that may have been missed in the confusion here is the fifteen hundred is a gross amount of income, not the net that goes to the employee. Exactly, it's gross, yeah. and the tax office gets the tax. So, yeah. so, so they, they, they were a bit whatever, silly. Were a bit silly. Know, were they? Silly. <laughs> You know that's going to be two or three hundred dollars of that fifteen hundred. Yeah. It's not going to be a major portion, but it's a really important factor because a lot of employees are going to be sitting there thinking, "Well, I should get all fifteen hundred, 
right, as cash, and they shouldn't. That's not the way that it's worded, um, and that's not the way it's done. So that's so that's really important that we're then putting aside that tax portion so that we can afford to pay that bill on our IAS statement, whether that's monthly or quarterly that you're filling that in. So that's a really that's a really important point too. Um, the other thing that we talked about, the tax office has discretion. Yes. Uh, um, so the, they haven't actually said how they're going to apply that discretion at the moment. We're waiting to see. We've actually rang the tax office probably six times, maybe more, <laughs> about some of these measures because, um, for instance, we've had situations where an employee, or let's say a trust, where the owners are working for the trust, they're not registered for PAYG, they take their money out as a distribution at the end of the year. Can we backdate a registration and make them an employee? Registered for PAYG from say 1st of January, it has to be before the 12th of March. Yep. And will that be caught within the integrity measures the tax office is talking about? The answer we've got back is that's okay. There's no problem with doing that, providing they've been drawing the wage out and actually been working in the business. Yeah, and that's and that's a really they're, they're really important points there. My personal view from everything that I've seen in relation to this is the government are scared about having, um, you know, 20, 30, 35 percent unemployment. OK, and, and rightfully so. This is the biggest thing to hit since, you know, the Great Depression. Right. Um, we, we're basically told the country to shut down if they do nothing. Everybody gets laid off. We go to 35 percent unemployment, they're paying the job seeker to everyone uh, and, and not paying the job keeper. The job keeper is at a high rate, but it's there to keep the employment uh, relationship between there. It's for people who are continuing to work. Okay. And even if that's continue to work in a very different way, you were talking about um, at the moment, there's only two people in your office. You've got two floors. So one's working upstairs, one's working downstairs. Um, social distancing is well and truly kept in order. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, you might as well be working from work, anywhere else. But, um, but with that, um, it's for people who are continuing to work. A lot of people are going to be working from home. There's going to be, you know, a whole lot of different things there. The government's doing the best they can to try and stop unemployment hitting 20 and 30 percent. This measure is there for that. It's not there just as a, a free hit for everyone. It's there for people who are still working, yeah? Exactly. And, and it's a, it was a smart move of the government. Instead of like in America, they're talking about 10, 15 percent unemployment. Well, let's not reflect those large figures. Let's give the companies the unemployment benefit and let the companies pay it on to the employee as a job keeper allowance so that um, they don't go onto the dole. And at the end of the time when we come out of this, and we will come out of it one day, um, those people have been gainfully employed all through that period. At the end of it, they're not looking for a job. They've already got a job because they've been employed through that period. And that's, and that's a really important thing. So it's keeping them, you know, it's keeping people employed, even if that is on restricted duties, um, so that it's coming up to the $1,500. Um, and if and if you can afford to pay them more, you're still allowed to pay them more. You don't have to pay everyone $1,500. Like if you've got, you know, a $100,000 person sitting doing a $100,000 job, you still pay them $100,000. You, you don't do that. But the government will support you through that, is my and, understanding. And in fact, Fair Work have already come out with a, a carve off, allowing you, if you've got someone on $100,000 a year, you might say, I can't employ you on 100,000, I'm going to employ you on 50. Yeah. Like the footballers, all the footballers have had a pay cut. Well, the Fair Work have already come out and said, you can amend and change employment contracts. You can put people off on holidays if they have to go on holiday, or if you want to put them on holidays. If you don't have the work, Fair Work are going to be behind you in terms of cutting down that person's wage, cutting down that person's um, uh, income in a way that can make your business still survive. Survival yeah. of the business is so important. And in our booklet that, that I mentioned to you earlier, I've actually put together some of these fair work carve-outs that allow yeah. you to do things that were unheard of a month ago. Yeah. To, and, and rightfully so. You know, we, you know, they should they should have been unheard of a month ago, but we're in a different world today than we were a month ago. Um, so 
we, we've talked a little bit about the tax office discretion and are they going to go hard or are they going to go easy? I actually believe short term they'll go easy, long term they'll go hard. So what will happen, they've got seven years to audit the country, right? Um, and I actually, I have a feeling that, you know, if, you, if you're rotting the system, chances are you're going to get caught. So don't rot the system, please, right? Exactly. Um, you know, you want to look after yourself. And we were discussing. So if you've artificially bolstered somebody's uh, income for during this, this time period, uh, and then you take it back and the, the government go, well, hang on, that person shouldn't have been on $1,500 then there is the propensity for them to have a clawback and for you to be out of pocket. Yep, exactly. And you've paid the employee and you're out of pocket and you, you will not get it back. Remember, and, and you want a clawback on the employee. <laughs> Good luck with that. But, um, yeah. but so what I was going to say, remember is, that you've got two aspects of this. You've got your job keeper and you've got your stimulus boost. So stimulus yeah. boost is based on the PAYG. So yeah. if you're... Um, Let's say instead of paying someone a hundred thousand, you're paying two hundred thousand to get you a higher PAYG, and then you get it back some other way. Yep. And that gives you three times in your your March bass, three times that PAYG. Yep. You're going to come unstuck because there are integrity measures. There's going to be that spike that's occurred in your in your PAYG. So remember, job keeper, stimulus boost, trench one and two, which is a ten thousand and ten thousand um, yep. minimum or 50,000, 50,000, maximum 100. Yep. So you've got two, those two come together with the job keeper. So all of the PAYG that you're paying and deducting out of wages, you actually get back at, at, um, from the government up to 50 grand for the March bass and, and the June bass. Absolutely. And, and that's real money. That's not funny money. It is real money. Yeah. Um, now, in relation, in relation, as I said, it's the tax office... It's never been easier to find people being non-compliant than it is today, okay? We've got single touch payroll. We know exactly who's getting paid what the whole time. The government know, you know, five minutes after you've done it um, because of single touch payroll. Um, the, the government's investigative measures, the tax office investigative measures and data matching and all that sort of stuff has never been sharper, okay? So all of these measures are here. So, you know, the message I'm trying to put out to small business owners is ask for everything that you're entitled to. Absolutely do that. And that is what you should do so that you can survive. This is this is here to help your business survive. You and your business survive through this time period. But don't be asking for more than is reasonable because so under those scenarios, the propensity to get caught is going to be there and you know, people are going to be, the government's going to be in enough debt helping the people who are being honest and needing it. Um, so if you don't need the support, the government's saying, you don't need support. If your business hasn't gone down by 30%, be happy that your business hasn't, you haven't lost more than 30% of your revenue. Um, if you're, uh, you know, if, if it has gone down by 30%, and, uh, and you're wanting to keep people on board, have them doing some work for you so that there is that ongoing uh, economic benefit there. That's the one thing I'm, I'm really asking people to be, to be mindful that as taxpayers, we will all be paying for this in future. Okay. And, that, and that's a worry, but I've already done some modeling on that, looking at how, how this 300 billion is going to be funded. And you know, it's not as bad as you think. The, the tax take is about 500 billion. That's roughly what, what, what the take is, 530, somewhere around there. And 300 billion over probably about two to three years, maybe, it's hard to say. It's not gonna be as bad as people think. So government's not gonna be in as big a hole and the economy is not gonna be in as big a hole as, as a lot of people are suggesting. The other part of it is that the, those integrity measures that you mentioned earlier, be aware the tax office can have so, has so many tools to enable them to data match so many things. So single touch payroll is, is a requirement. It's a requirement from 1st July last year. Every company that pays people must have single touch payroll. That means every time you do a pay run, you're saying the gross pay, net pay, super, tax file number of that employee, all those things. So very hard, very easy to go, okay, you've had um, 
26 weeks at X amount per week. And now you've got from the 1st of March, six weeks at double X, three X or something is going, well, that'd be yeah. like a red flag. Yeah. So just be aware of that. The data matching things are there. The other side is you, you, you alluded to seven years. Um, it's not actually seven years. It's, it's two years after lodgement or four years if you're um, a complicated case or, or a larger operation. Yeah. So my advice there is get your tax return lodged on time so that so you've got to hold your breath for two years or four years. And, and particularly if it's anything is a little bit marginal. Remember, if it's illegal, of course, you, you wouldn't do it. But sometimes mm -hmm. things are a little bit marginal and you're just not sure. And we'll often get that. We'll ring the tax office and we'll say, this is situational. We'll run it through our, uh, one, of, uh, one of our groups to get yeah. advice. Sometimes it's not clear. So just be aware of that. Uh, things are not as black and white as your tax office or other people might think. <laughs> Another really important point in all of this is the tax offer, the tax office is being very lenient right now. Okay. And they've been told to be lenient because otherwise we end up with massive unemployment. Okay. Um, this is what the government's trying to avoid is massive unemployment. And so with that, if you are behind in your tax, uh, behind in your taxes, now's a great time to get everything together and get your tax in because they, they won't be chasing for that money in a heartbeat. They will be very reasonable both today, but in the oncoming periods because they need to not put the shock into the nation and cause that massive unemployment. So with that, if you're behind, it's time to catch up, right? Just bite the bullet and do it. Your accountant won't judge you. They'll, they'll be congratulating you for getting your stuff in. Right, okay. so we'll get extra work out of it, but, but you're right. And uh, at the moment we've been getting extensions of time uh, all we have to say is that their business is affected by COVID-19 and everybody is. And yep. immediate um, deferral till 12th of September. So, because yep. 12th of March was when the Prime Minister made the announcement. So all yep. the extensions are now 12th of September, almost automatic. So then yep. you can get your job stimulus packages in to, to pay or offset all that tax debt. Yep. So hopefully so, this will, will, will change the landscape for a lot of people. Yeah. So. So we are looking at having a, a more detailed discussion. We just want to get those key points out there that one, um, the job keepers for people who were earning $1,500 or more per fortnight, they needed to have been registered for employment uh, on the 1st of March. Um, and three, the $1,500 is a gross amount of income, not the net. Um, to me, they're the really important things that didn't come out of earlier announcements uh, and weren't really obvious. Um, if you have employees in that position, if you can keep them working, this is exactly what this is for. Even if they're working on reduced capacity, as Alan was saying, uh, Fair Work have been told that it's okay and they've put out different recommendations on, uh, you know, on reducing people's incomes so that the business can survive. If 50% of small business fail because of COVID-19, all of a sudden, we employ 45% of people. There's 22% extra unemployment just from small business. Let's, you know, we, we also have to worry about all the people that are laid off from big companies and uh, and the impact that that's going to have in the unemployment. They're already talking about 10%. Um, there are a challenge with that. So please, the one thing I want to encourage you to do is maximise every opportunity here. The state government have the half a billion dollars of interest-free loans, um, and that is for working capital, I understand. Yes, and you're going to need working capital. Even the job keeper, you, you have to pay people for probably six weeks before you get the money from the government. So the, the government's encouraging people to either go to the bank and get an overdraft, which will be um, uh, secured by the government, or alternatively apply for the $250,000 um, job support package from the Queensland government. And we've done quite a lot of those. The applications are quite quite easy. Uh, it's based on wages. Yep. So if you had wages of, say, average to 500,000 for 18 and 19 tax years, you, you can get 250 grand. And, and it's just free for the first year. So, and you might need that. You might Absolutely. need it to cover this, this shortfall. Because uh, originally when the, Treasure, when the Prime Minister came out with these announcements, they said you'd be paid in 14 days. 
Well, that's not true. You're not being paid in 14 days. There is none of this is being paid in 14 days. Even the the boost, trench one of the stimulus boost, is paid about 15 May. The next one will be paid, depending on whether you're monthly or quarterly lodge, a lodger, uh, yeah. either 15 July. So you've got to carry those wages for all that yeah. period. So you might need this Queensland government loan or go to your bank and get an overdraft, which will be guaranteed. All the banks have got specific COVID-19 loan packages they're offering. Um, yeah. Interest on it. Um, some of them, they're, they're waiving or putting low interest on it. Be aware you've got a cash flow problem if you're going to go forward and you need to manage that cash flow because the government is not paying you in 14 days like the Prime Minister. More detailed, um, probably a half day um, series of workshops around all the different stimulus packages. And this is only if people are interested in this. Um, what we'll do is we'll get a, uh, a team of advisors that uh, have studied the detail uh, because the devil is in the detail as somebody's pointed out. Um, so we'll get a, a team of advisors um, to sit down and talk about and answer questions that people do have around this because if one person has a question, I can guarantee probably 50% of our audience do. So with that, um, you know, I, I've asked in a post, uh, is it worthwhile having a half day conference on this? If you're interested, register and let us know that you are interested because if we get not enough people uh, saying they're interested, we're not gonna put it on. We're not gonna put it on and waste everyone's time if it's not a benefit for people. So really important that um, that everyone remembers uh, that, that you just put your hand up and say, yeah, I'm interested in this. Uh, it's, you know, Putting your hand up doesn't cost a cent. So, Alan, I want to thank you very much for, uh, uh, as you said, you got bored over Easter. You weren't allowed to play golf um, or go and visit anyone. So you, you, well, you thought, you thought you it was really fun Easter to be sitting down reading legislation. I, whew, Good luck I, to you. I, I played golf on Sunday, actually. You're allowed to play golf, providing two people. Um, so I played on Sunday and I actually played really well. A great well, there you go. See, I, I thought I wasn't allowed to play anymore. So. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've taken social social isolation far too far then, uh, clearly. Um, so thank you very much, Alan, for your time today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Alan has put in a post, um, he's, he's written a 57-page uh, summary uh, of, of the stuff. So uh, if you're interested in the 57-page summary, all the details there, uh, you can, uh, Alan will um, send it to you. All you've got to do is reach out to him. Um, and as I said, if you're looking for a half day uh, conference where we talk about the different measures, all the different measures, I think there's about 15 different measures that uh, uh, that I can think of uh, that we have. So let us know if you're interested in that. So thanks very much for coming along today. Really appreciate it. Alan, thank you very much for your time and, 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 and generosity with sharing your knowledge. Uh, I very much appreciate it. My pleasure. And I'm glad to pass on to our members of our group support and help through this difficult time. And if you need help in terms of just want to, want to copy my booklet, just reach out, no problem at all. Um, but the main thing is we need to survive. We need to get through this. It's, it's a once in a lifetime type event, hopefully. And, um, you know, anything we can do in the small business group to help, please reach out. We're happy to do so. Absolutely. And, and that actually brings up our four o'clock uh, meeting of uh, four o'clock live session today, where we're going to talk about the three F's of recovery, and they're not what you think. So um, I promise there won't be any swearing involved. So look forward to seeing some of you guys then. Thanks very much. Thanks, Alan. Great. Bye Thank now. You. My pleasure.